usually when people get to be as senior as I am, these meetings ask us to talk about the past, but uh, this time they uh, asked me uh, to talk about the future, even though I think I will be talking about mostly the future of the audience. And it was prompted by an interesting question that was uh, posed by someone who was considering being a fellow with me. And that is, what is an epilepsy doctor going to be doing 20 years from now? I'd never been asked that before. And I don't think I can ask it, answer it uh, for 20 years. Uh, but I can uh, take a shot at it for uh, five to 10 years. So I made a list of most of the things that I think epilepsy doctors are doing these days, such as diagnosing epilepsy, uh, figuring out the, the etiology of the epilepsy, reading EEGs, picking anti-epileptic medications, counseling patients, deciding whether to do neurostimulation or seizure surgery or alternate treatments and so on. And then I thought about what is in the wings in terms of new technology that might impact whether or not we're doing those uh, in the future. And it turns out that the answer, when we think about it, is a little bit sobering because things are likely to change. There are several things that are likely to be automated. One that depresses me no end is EEG. I'm not at all sure that doctors are going to be interpreting EEGs 10 years from now because there are very substantial advances in machine learning, which is a type of trained artificial intelligence that will probably enable computers to be interpreting EEGs in the relatively near future. Uh, we and several other places are already working on that. And by the way, it's been decades since any electrocardiograms have been interpreted by humans. They're interpreted by machines and countersigned by physicians. EEGs are much more complicated, but the technology has advanced to a stage where I think the many years I spent reading records and teaching others how to read them may be obsoleted. Another area that is uh, going to be changed by artificial intelligence is diagnostics. Um, we look at MRIs, uh, for example, as an important part of determining the etiology of seizure problems. Well, studies have now shown, for example, one study that came out of Stanford, that a trained uh, intelligent machine can do a better job of recognizing pneumonia on chest x-rays than can board-licensed radiologists. And another study showed that a similar machine could do a better job of diagnosing skin cancers from the appearance than could dermatopathologists. Now, of course, the machines were trained by radiologists and dermatopathologists on thousands of studies but after they were trained, they could exceed their teacher in accuracy, not to say uh, speed. I'm working with a company to see if we can put large amounts of clinical uh, input into a computer and have it tell us what the best seizure medicine is going to be, because picking medicines is right now very much an educated uh, guessing game and often the patient will pay the consequences for the doctor uh, doing the trial and error guessing of medications. So machines may, able, may be able to do a better, a better job of that. In the surgical arena, um, some and perhaps much of what the surgeon does is being taken over by robots that uh, will um, implant electrodes uh, automatically on a trajectory um, or will um, recognize tissue differences automatically during certain types of uh, surgeries. And it's not at the point now where the robot will do the surgery, but the robots are increasingly assisting doctors uh, for surgery. Now, I 
think there are probably some areas in which doctors will remain necessary, at least I hope so. And those probably include the larger judgment uh, issues, and they probably include some of the educational issues. But even those are a little bit suspect. Uh, there's something called the Turing test in artificial intelligence, which basically says if you can't tell whether the entity on the other side of a curtain is a human or a machine, then it has uh, true machine intelligence. Uh, and machines are getting better at doing diagnostics, uh, particularly in cases where there are uh, diseases that doctors don't encounter very often, the rare uh, diseases. Uh, we may not think of them. Uh, machines uh, do think of them and do put them on lists. So um, doctors are not going to be obsolete in the epilepsy business in five to 10 years, probably not even 20. Uh, but what they're doing uh, will be very different. They'll be more uh, education, I think. There'll be more research. There'll be uh, more work on ways to try to prevent uh, epilepsy from happening. But the routine work of medicine, uh, test interpretation, diagnostic lists, um, probabilities of good outcomes from different medications or different surgical or neurostimulation procedures, uh, these things will be greatly assisted uh, by machines. Hopefully will be assisted and not obsoleted.